So I did this original recording and I was really quite sleep deprived. I uh, didn't really read the <laughs> notes very well. Um, so I just decided, so considering I got the whole movement speed thing fairly wrong, I'm going to just essentially do it again. I always get like lots of passive aggressive YouTube comments. So I was like, screw it. I'm just going to do the whole thing again. And uh, I, I could talk about the movement speed more effectively now because I just basically got it wrong. I, it's the activation movement speed that I got completely wrong. But I'll talk about. I'm going to talk about boots first um, because in fact I'm going to talk about items first because it just makes more sense with the rest of the changes. That's the, probably what I did wrong last time. So Aegis cost is up and cooldown is up. It's just kind of making reflex block more of a scarcity, and that in general means that. Um, you know, I, I think Celestial Shroud is going to be better for most of the player base, unless you are specifically dis like worried about one particular ability, or you want like direct control over um, avoiding ability effects. You know, because you don't want your you wouldn't want your Celestial Shroud to be procked by like a Celeste Q or something. Atlas Pauldron costs down against almost inconsequential fifty gold. Book of Eulogies heal on melee is going. Up, which means you're going to get slightly more sustaining lane for melee heroes. Doesn't mean too much. Time before decay on breaking point. Now everyone keeps saying like, "Oh, Vox is bad. Vox is going to be bad this update." And Vox, I, I really don't think Vox is going to be terrible. I, he might not be like top tier, but I definitely think Vox is going to be okay. And and the fact that you've got a breaking point change at the time before decay has gone up, um, as well as the fact that you've got Tyrant's monocle changes. I I genuinely want to try out breaking point double Tyrant's monocle Vox again. Because we'll talk about his changes in, in when we get to the to the heroes, but he actually could be okay. Capacitor plate cost down, and again, this is um, health going up. The, the proc cooldown uh, has gone up, but the bonus movement speed duration is up as well. So essentially, it's like, but like buffing the stats and the cost, but nerfing the actual effect. But I, you, you're still very likely um, going to be building this on on champions that you would have built on, on anyway. So it's, it's going to be fine for things like Finn, fine for things like Adam. Celestial Shroud caught, cost caught by over 10%, which is very good. And a Celestial Shroud is now going to be more attainable, much more readily too. Fountain of Renewal, cost down, great. It just means more accessible defensive options for captains. Um, Halcyon Chargers, now this is where I got confused. Halcyon Chargers movement speed bonus is from 0.7 to 0.5. So that's a 0.2 overall. So we'll have a look at Journey Boots, and the cost is... Down, the movement speed is down, and the cooldown is also down, with a cooldown on damaging enemy hero is 15 seconds. So you can refresh it pretty quickly. Um, like, you should be able to refresh it within, like, four four pieces of damage. So that's actually, I think that's actually a significant buff to Journey Boots. Makes them really accessible. Now, obviously, the, the sprint has been changed, which is what I'm going to go to in a minute, but it makes the Journey Boots more accessible, more frequently able to... Um, be used so that's that's a pretty good that's a pretty good buff metal jacket again small buff uh with the cost makes it more accessible as a defensive item might make it more viable against high basic attack carries this is all these massive changes to pulse weave i need to kind of wrap my head around cost has been cut passive movement speed also cut the proc cooldown is up but the move speed bonus is up as well i guess to compensate for a lot of the move speed changes damage per second is up with the scaling going up but the burst damage scaling has gone down significantly the slow scaling has gone up and the slow duration so it's like a lateral change you lose a bit of burst damage but you've got more damage per second your slow amount scaling is up and the slow duration is also up uh, the only th other thing is that the cooldown has been increased by 50 percent. so it's, it's a pretty significant cooldown increase on pulse weave but um, it just means when you use it, it might be more utility focused. You might get a bit more utility out of it, a little bit less in terms of direct damage, which is probably fine. I like that as a change for Pulse Weave. Reflex Block, cooldown increased massively. Uh, makes it a pretty crappy tier 2 item, 2 minute cooldown. Um, you know, you, you, you'd you need to upgrade that to Aegis as soon as possible if you're looking to go for Reflex Block or into Crucible as soon as possible. Rook's Decree. Just a buff overall. Great for people like Laurel or Lyra who already used this as an item later on in their build. Slumbering Husk, buff overall. Great. Uh, more defensive options being buffed. Spellfire. The damage over time has gone down significantly base, but the crystal ratio scaling on it has gone up. Basically means you can't really build Spellfire first item. It's likely going to be a second or third item now. Um, and I really think, you know, if we think about... Um, well, it's, it's all based on levels, so it's difficult to say. But let's say... This and this. 
You'd, you'd need, like, at least a Shattered Glass to get it to equal. So Spellfire, second item, I think. Spellfire, second item, at least. You know, maybe third. This is what I got confused about. Sprint Boots. Sprint Move Speed. So the actual sprinting that you get from Sprint Boots. This is where I got confused. I For some reason, I just thought this was the base move speed of Boots. That has been cut by about one. But the sprint duration has gone up. And it affects all boots that are built from sprint boots. This is where I got confused. So the actual boots, tier one boots themselves have not been changed. But the sprinting movement speed bonus has been changed um, by about, you know, one. It's 0.9, but it's about one. And as well as the fact that you've had some movement speed cuts from tier two and tier three boots. Um, Storm Crown, Damage Non Jungle, and Storm Guy Banner. Like just, just don't buy this top lane, basically. This is making it slightly better if you upgrade to Storm Crown, but just don't buy this top lane. Teleport boots, cooldown is down, which is probably a significant part of this. The rest of it is just a, a cut, cut, uh, a cut, cut, and move speed. Travel boots, total cost down, move speed is down by 0.1 on buying, and travel move speed bonus is down by 0.5 outside of combat, and that affects boots, all boots that build from travel boots. So essentially, um, it's trying to take some of the weight off buying boots for move speed so boots are still going to give you a minor move speed increase but what they i think the ethos behind this is it's trying to take move, trying to take like tier two like people build house in charges like first or second items sometimes on some mid laners it's trying to make it so that that is less viable for pure move speed less viable in the jungle as like a first item um which I think is fair, and we'll talk about that once we go to the rest of the meta changes. War Treads, again, we talked about that there. So this is what I got wrong the first time, um, and I just wanted to redo it, because I just I just basically read it completely wrong. And it's also going to see, so with, with the fact that um, Boots have had a little move, move speed cut, we've had um, move speed cut on some items, and then flow um, river move, movement speed has also been cut by 0 0.3. Um, you can see here that... Black Law has had a pretty significant buff in the late game, and this is going to hurt like hell. 40.5% max health. Armor and shield penetration going up, so you just need to make sure you're careful about your positioning around Black Claw. Um, I'm guessing this is Black Claw's movement speed has gone up um, to 4, so he's going to move a bit quicker down the mid lane. So that'll be moving between turrets will be a bit quicker. And that means that teams will be able to keep up with him potentially. So you just have to be very careful about Black Claw, and the, uh, the t this is the most important change here. The total percentage health based damage, you've got to be super careful about that. Same with Cloak Ghost Wing. Just means you have to be like super committed when you're taking the um, the dragon. You might have to juggle aggro a little bit. This percentage health based damage is really going to hurt. Uh, again, these are just movement speed changes to minions to allow you to um, keep up in the early game. They're going to be a bit slower in the early game. The interesting thing is about the attack ranges here. The movement speed is all based on the movement speed changes that are happening essentially with boots and, and so on and so forth, having a little bit lower movement speed. Um, this is just that you have, uh, you're quicker than minions in the, in the early game, it means you can rotate a bit more quickly um, in and out of lane. And also, um, they scale up because as we get the boots, you'll, you'll start to get a bit quicker. Attack range is going down for siege minions, range minions, and captain minions, which means it's a little bit easier for uh melee heroes to a, a attack these in the laning phase but also defend against these when they're at their turret because they won't have to move so far away from the turret to actually get uh attacks on these particular minions so if you're uh, combined with the book of eulogies changes it's just making melee laners a little bit safer okay so these are all the movement speed changes now they're a little bit sort of wild across the board some are getting 0.4 some are getting 0.3 some are getting 0.5 feel free to come and look through the changes whenever you want um so in, in changes of the Blackshaw Rush speed boost and all uh, boot items, we are buffing heroes base movement speed to keep things crisp and let your skills take center stage. So, so essentially, because the sprints have been nerfed, and this is what I got confused about, we have a cut by 0.2 to most tier 3 boots and a 0.5 cut out of movement speed. We have a 0.3 cut on the river and we have a 0.1 cut on tier 2 boots. So we're actually seeing a 0.3 cut across the board on boots but some heroes are getting a 0.4 increase some heroes are getting a 0.3 increase some heroes are getting a 0.5 increase so some heroes are going to get a net tiny movement speed buff some heroes are going to remain equal but in general everyone is going to be moving slightly quicker you're going to move a lot quicker without boots and you're going to move ever so slightly quicker with boots um when you get those tier 3 upgraded, but it's not going to have the same impact upgrading your tier 2 and tier 3 boots that it did previously. 
So that's the most important part. The sprint is also lower, um, but you you have extended duration on it. So people like Gwen, who's got a 0.5 movement speed increase, they're going to benefit quite highly from this because that they're going to get a net movement speed increase across the board, realistically. But yeah, look through these in your own leisure. Some heroes, again, most heroes will benefit from the movement speed changes. Some heroes will not. Um, again, heroes with lots of movement speed abilities or lots of gap closing abilities, Saw being one of them for some reason, are not going to feel the changes as much. Um, but some heroes are going to feel the changes. And it's, in general, you're going to notice that um, outside of the river, without boots, you're going to feel a little bit more uh, quick. And then with boots, you're not going to notice the change as much as you did previously. It's basically taking the emphasis on having to upgrade your tier 1 boots early to be able to cope with very quick rotations around the map. All right, Adagio stats. And this is, I, again, apparently I read this wrong. So his attack range has been cut. Crystal ratio impact damage has gone up. Um, and the crystal ratio has gone up. So someone told me that this is a nerf to CP Adagio. Um... Not this bit anyway. I need to I need, I need to read through this bit specifically, right? Um, but let's have a look. So it's, it's basically, it is a net buff for CP Adagio. Now the attack range getting nerfed is huge for both CP and Weapon Power Adagio. That kind of guts CP and Weapon, weapon Power Adagio quite heavily. Um, this bit here, that's in general a, a net increase across the board for CP Adagio and for, for, for even for... Um, Captain Adagio because the base heal has gone up too. So his A has been buffed, categorically been buffed. Now I need to work out Agent of Wrath. The cooldown is down, the stacks have gone up, uh, the stacks have gone down, so you're only going to get four basic attacks. I need to compare, let's say we have one, let's say we have 100 CP, and six hits of 100 CP is going to give me 240 damage on my initial one. And that's just with the damage here. Let's say four hits of 100 CP. Sorry, that's a complete lie. <laughs> no, it's not a complete lie. Then the four hits is exactly the same, right? So this is exactly the same right here. So six times four is, is so let's see, when you've got 100 CP, that's going to give you 60 crystal damage. Six times four is 240. Four times six is 240. This is equal. This is equal. This is basically equal across the board. Four times nine is 360. 6 times 6 is also 360. Or 60 times 6, sorry. You know what I mean. So this is th this hasn't changed right here. This hasn't changed at all. Arcane Fire bonus and self-cast self uh, bonus crystal ratio is up. So you have uh, an, a bonus if they are hit by Arcane Fire. That's gone up by 10%. And the self-cast bonus has gone up by 10%. So it helps, like, if you're building... If you're going to buff this on someone else, it's exactly the same. Um, it is a slight net nerf if you're casting it on yourself or if that target has been afflicted with uh, Arcane Fire. A slight net nerf. Now, some of that power has been weighted onto Gift of Fire itself. Um, so you're going to have a slightly increased, more impactful Gift of Fire. Just to put this into perspective, let's say I have 100 CP, it's 40 crystal ratio on a, on a Gift of Fire affected target and I'm self-casting. So that is in total, I'm going to get a 110% uh, crystal ratio here, okay? So this is 110%. That means I'm doing 110 damage per hit, 660, 990. That's 120%, 150%, so I'm getting 150. That is 600, and that is 800, no, 900. So you're seeing like a, it's a 90 damage nerf there, and it is a, let me just work that up again, 60 damage nerf there. So you're getting 60 less CP and 90 less CP damage if you're self-casting it and they're afflicted by Arcane Fire. Um, let's put that into context with with this. You're probably going to make a lot of that damage up if you're, if you're hitting your Gift of Fire. So it's kind of like lateral changes, and it doesn't impact you if you're not using Gift of Fire or Agent of Wrath on yourself, or if you're using on a, a target that's been afflicted by um, Gift of Fire. Versus Judgment, Fortified Health has been nerfed heavily and the stun duration has been changed until the second. So really it's like a, it's basically a net nerf for Adagio um, overall. A net nerf for Adagio, including CP Adagio. However, Gift of Fire is going to hit slightly better. Um, and unless you're 
manage to get every single one of these basic attacks off, it's going to mean less and less as you go on, right? So unless you get like the full six or four basic attacks off, it's, it's not going to matter as much. It's even it matters even less if you're casting this on someone else, right? It matters even less if you're if, if you're casting it on someone else. It matters. It, that's a minute amount if you're casting it on someone else. Okay. So those are the those are the changes. Uh, but it is a net now for Adagio, and Captain Adagio is going to get slightly better. I think Captain Adagio gets slightly better from this, right? And he was already pretty good, so that's fine. These alpha changes, three seconds, uh, and only one second when you overdrive Prime Directive. You overdrive Prime Directive anyway, in most cases, on CP Alpha. Um, and I think on Weapon Power Alpha, you maxed it second anyway. I don't think these changes make much of a difference. No longer deals reduced damage to lay minions. Probably a bigger change than most people realize. This is going to allow mid lane anchor to be more effective. Um, you can clear waves and roam much more easily. Uh, anchor was kind of consigned to top lane and jungle. This is also going to mean top lane anchor is pretty good because you can clear waves more effectively under tower, especially as a melee hero. So anchor going to be really good on this update. This is an irrelevant change, and I don't know why they did it. I have no idea why you needed to nerf Catherine. Let's have a look at Celeste. So this is, this is basically a net nerf for Celeste across everything, including base damages, energy costs, and crystal ratios. Um, I still think Celeste's kit is really good, and these are small changes. I don't think it's going to impact her totally, because the Nova damage is the same when you overdrive. You overdrived Heliogenesis anyway. You get a 40 base damage and a 10%. So it's essentially a 5 energy increase in the late game, 40 base damage, and a 10% increase. Celeste's still going to be fine. Irrelevant change. Like, it doesn't, ch doesn't change anything. Uh, nerf on Truth of the Tooth until you overdrive it. Law of the Claw has been um, nerfed. Like energy cost has gone up. Max health damage is up in the early game, but sort of, and up in the late game. Um, and the cooldown is going down too. So this, this is kind of a buff to Fortress in the late game, but it kind of nerfs his early game. Buff to Fortress in the late game, he's going to be, I think, almost... Oh, I'd say much stronger in the late game, but he's going to be much worse in the early game. Well, not much worse in the early game, but he's going to have to ramp up, and you really need to overdrive both of the abilities. So you're really not going to see the effect of this until, what, max level? You're not going to see the effect of this until max level, and how many games really go to max level? Especially this change here. This is, you know, if you're going to be maxing A and B on Fortress, you're not going to get the range increase or the max percentage health base damage until you've overdrive both abilities, which is a really late stage in the game, and I don't think many people get to, like, super max level in games all the time so it's cutting fortress's early game which is already pretty bad all right so people were really raving about these energy costs and i'm just going to quickly um have a look at grace's overall energy in the early game um let's have a look and this is just me having just my own personal curiosity grace's early game energy is 268 and she gets 35 per level okay so this is changing it so that she can do what like four of these realistically compared to to eight so this is you you are cutting the the ability to um you are massively cutting the ability to use your benediction that's a pretty hefty energy increase the energy decrease on holy nova is basically so that if you're ever comboing these together you're offsetting the cost in the early game and as you get towards the later game if you're building energy and you're building energy regeneration it's not going to impact you as much um that's a big cooldown nerf to the divine intervention but the heal amount has gone up in the late game so i would say realistically this is a pretty good set of changes for uh captain grace it's, it is going to hurt i would say weapon power grace unless you're looking to go spell sword um because you're going to be running out of energy on benediction in the early game but you know as the game progresses you'll feel these changes less and less um and i would say like a lot of this is it, it feels like a net nerf but there is some lateral changes with cooldown here um and the healing increase in the late game so once you get level two you're going to get a minor increase and there is some cooldown increases so it's, it is it kind of feels like a net nerf with the energy cost of this being one of Grace's most spammed abilities, but it's some lateral changes overall. Um, and I think, you know, once you get a bit more energy behind you, you get a few levels. I think by level six or seven, um, this is not going to impact you as much as you think it will. And everything else gets better right across the board. Gwen, skeletal, passive movement speed is down. So she realistically got a. She realistically got a. What? Like a 0.3 increase in speed. But the passive movement speed bonus lockout is up to five. Okay. So Gwen across the board is going to 
probably be a similar speed. She's probably going to be a similar speed to what she was before. It's not going to affect her too much. And again, every hero is going to be quicker without boots. All right, Inara. Cooldown is down, but the energy cost is up to 60 across the board. And again, just for the sake of clarity, I'm going to have a look at what Inara's early uh, energy levels are. Inara. Thing, glory. I'm doing this on my phone, which is why I'm taking a little bit of time. Her early energy is 201. So instead of being able to get, what, like, hmm, almost seven of these off, like six point something of these off, you're going to be able to get, like, three. Which, um, again, this was only used, I would say this is used more infrequently. The cooldown is pretty long. But you wouldn't be using three of these in quick succession anyway. So that's, I, 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 I like, I, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, yeah. It doesn't really make much difference to me. Nature's Wrath, the cooldown is up significantly. The energy cost is up to 100 across the board. So that, that does mean, you know, towards the early game, this will be more impactful to use. You'll have to spend more of your energy. You're not going to be able to spam A, for instance, afterwards. But the damage has been going up to compensate. Lateral changes, again, it just means you need to be more careful about where you use your abilities. Um, maybe you need to think about some energy regeneration. But when you've got things like um, Aftershock Clockwork builds going on, I really don't think it's going to make too much of an impact on even the cooldowns. I think Inara is going to be fine. Jewel, Thunderstrike, wow, nerfed. I said this before, I don't think Kinetic needs buffs. Um, her A gets a buff, and the range, even though the cooldown's gone up on her charge pulse, the range has gone up. Like, no one used this, like, more than one time in their team fight anyway. So you're going to get it off cooldown by the time the next team fight comes along. A lot of people had Spell Sword in Kinetic's builds, and now you're making her A deal more damage. And the fact that her range has been uh, increased by, what, like, 33%? Just over on... Her ultimate, don't think any of this needed to happen. Kinetic was already pretty good, um, but it probably helps the, the bad Kinetic players. Irrelevant change. Um, Mystic Missiles, energy cost is up slightly in the early game. Crystal ratio is down. Seraphic Flare cooldown is up, and the damage is down. Still think Magnus will be fine. This is, I mean, it's just like Kinetic, uh, just like Celeste. Magnus offers a lot to a team. Um, and some slight um, damage nerfs might bring some other mid laners in, but you know, you're still going to see Magnus as a very meta mid laner. Finn, Quibble, energy cost is uh, up in the late game. Polite Company, energy cost is up across the board, but the cooldown is down. The cooldown is up on Quibble and Force of Cord energy cost. Is up. So this is like a net nerf for Finn, who I really didn't think needed a nerf. Um, overall, this is going to make him more energy hungry. Luckily, Captains build quite a lot of energy in their build, so it's not going to be too much of a big deal. Um, but yeah, I mean, you just might need to consider um, some early energy regeneration and consider some energy regeneration in your build if you want to have the longer team fights. Right, someone complained to me about what I said about, I think it was what about I said about Reza. So I'm going to quickly look into this. Reza Vainglory. Again, looking at his energy levels. So he's got three. He's actually got 380 energy in the early game. The damage on his Scorcher is up. Um, so instead of costing 70, it's going to cost 100. So he could get. Let's say. Let's say you're level two, and that's 410 energy. 410 energy at level two, or 412 rather. 400. Let's say 410 for the sake of it. 70 would have got me. <sighs> five combos and just very close to six combos now that it's a hundred it gets me four combos so it's the difference of five combos to four combos but my scorcher deals more damage on in the early game when i hit it uh and, and in the late game i've i've got a, an energy cost difference of 10 so it really doesn't make a difference so it's the difference of four direct combos almost sorry five direct combos with almost six to four direct combos but the damage in the early game has gone up to compensate um, you just need to hit your abilities, right? If I were to do five combos of this, it's 20 damage change. That would give me... Well, it's a 20 damage change overall. So this gives me five combos. I get uh, 200 damage out the Scorcher. This gives me uh, four combos. I get four, 240 damage out the combo, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm not calculating this. I'm not calculating. So it's a difference of about... It's a difference of what, like 40 damage across the board? Five, five times four, 200. Four times six, uh, 240. So actually, you're, you're actually getting more damage out of the Reza combo if you can hit it. You just need to hit it, right? You just need to hit that combo. 
It gets less as the game goes on, but then also the energy changes equalize across the board, so it's fine. You just need to be more effective with your combo, and if you hit all four combos that you can get with that energy, you're going to deal more damage compared to the five combos that you would have done here. It might seem ridiculous, but that's, that's genuinely the case. You, if you hit your Scorcher every time and combo it, you're going to deal more damage. Actually, I'm lying. I literally read the energy. Yeah, so no, no I'm, not, I'm not lying, because the energy cost is, is 100, yeah. So yeah, you, you're going to deal more damage if you can hit your combos with Reza. So it, it's, te it's technically a buff if you can hit your combos. Just to reiterate, I can get 5 times 7 is 35 and almost 6, right? So I'm almost 6. I'm 10 energy away from 6. So let's say we could even get 6 combos in. If I get 6 combos in, and that requires me to have 10 extra energy, 6 times 40, 240. I can get four combos in, but I have to hit them. I'm still doing 240, right? So it's technically technically balanced, but a ever so slight buff for people who can hit Scorcher. So there you go. Okay, Ringo, Achilles shot. The energy cost is down in the late game. Twirling silver, energy cost is up across the board. Bonus movement speed has been cut because of the base movement speed increase. Um, but the duration has also been cut. And this is what I said previously, and, and forget the Hellfire Brew changes. Um... That's, I guess, because CP Ringo was, was was a bit of a big deal. But you maxed Hellfire Brew anyway, so it's just going to mean he's going to have less impact in the early game. This is the big change, and I think it hurts Ringo quite a lot. Um, it's down to four seconds. You cut the overall duration by 33%, and that might actually hurt Ringo quite a lot. People use Ringo because of Twirling Silver, especially Weapon Power Ringo. And that's actually really, I think that really hurts Ringo overall. Irrelevant change. Sang Feng, cooldown down, damage up cooldown down damage am i reading this right cooldown up damage also up sang feng is going to be great i don't even need to say much more he was already obnoxious with his base damages and now his base damage oh wait no a down i'm an idiot down in the early game that's probably what i missed and then down in the early game so he yeah his his level three is going to be identical on divine fist um it's only going to get when you get to level four that it's going to start to hurt more um Again, I still think top lane Sang Feng will be fine, and Captain Sang Feng is also going to be fine. So Captain Sang Feng and, and top lane Sang Feng will be will be great. Saw energy cost up for some reason. Damage down in the early game. Oh, sorry, up in the early game, um, but down in the mid game and down in the late game. The percentage health based damage is there, but it stays the same in the late game. Bonus move speed has been cut. I think overall because of the uh, the, the movement speed changes. Suppressing fire damage up in the early game, down in the late game, with the slow strength utility going up, and Mad Cannon damage has been cut, as well as the fact the cooldown has gone up. Why would you nerf Saw, like CP Saw in the late game? That's the only part, point at which he was good. Now CP Saw is going to be useless. Well, not useless, but it's a massive hit to CP Saw overall. Like, he was only good in the early, the late game. Uh, it doesn't make any sense to me. Um, damage per second. Scarf will still be fine. Got He's got crazy range on his A. And that's that damage per second on his ultimate, by the way. I, it's, it's a pretty big hit. It's like 150 per second, which is insane. But um, he, he still has a really impactful Spitfire and Goop. And I, I think that he'll be okay. He might not be like S tier anymore, but he will still be a f perfectly viable mid laner. Kaku. Cooldown down and X-Retsu cooldown also down. So just at a, a small nerf for both Weapon Power and CP Taka. Um, he was already like sort of borderline good and he'll just be continue to be good, you know? So they've nerfed the cooldown in the late game on Tony's Come At Me, which is his passive, I think. Um, so he's not going to get the shield every... He's going to get the shield every six seconds. But to compensate, Jawbreaker's energy cost has gone up in the early game, down in the late game. The empowered duration is down, but he gets a massive movement speed bonus as you level it up, and the stun duration has also gone up. So you just basically need to be more impactful with your A and in the time frame that you use it. And if you overdrive it, you're going to get more CC. Trash talk energy up massively. That's a massive energy increase. Let me have a quick look at that. Um, trash talk. Uh, oh, wait. Why am I Googling trash talk, Tony? I don't need to tell you that. That's just insane. But they've compensated for it with um, being able to level up to two seconds duration with the weapon power ratio and increasing the base. You just have to be way more careful about using Trash Door because it might eat through your energy more quickly. Badaboom, cooldown is uh, down, and then the energy cost is also up. 
The damage is up to compensate with a big weapon power ratio uh, bonus, and that's going to basically make weapon power Tony more impactful. Weapon power Tony mains probably going to be pretty happy here. I'm sure Maxmen will be fairly happy with these changes. It's really only a little bit of cooldown change and some energy increases, but everything else, you've got more CC, more weapon power scaling ratios. This is great for uh, Tony. Vox, this is what I'm saying. Three seconds on his sonic zoom, when you don't naturally build that much cooldown reduction into your build is great, because that is a 25% cut to what it was previously. Which means if, we, if the breaking point double turrets monocle build works, it's going to be pretty good. Like, don't hate on Vox. I, I, I really want to see if Vox works in this scenario. And it's also great because he's got loads of buffs to his ultimate, and CP Vox might even be able to use this, because you're getting, essentially, the ability 25% more often be able to bounce resonances, get two more resonance bounces out, and you get way more mobility, and with the movement speed, especially with the movement speed increases to melee heroes, you're going to be able to kite more effectively. So that's just my thoughts. I got a lot of people saying that I was talking shite, so, you know. Yates, cooldown, energy cost up, doubled in the early game, Christ. You just have to be far, 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 far more impactful uh, with that one hook. You can't just spam hooks in lane, essentially. Okay, so uh, those are the thoughts adjusted. I hope you enjoy them, and thank you very much.